welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika's Den. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here, okay? Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So this is my review, guys, for House of the Dragon, Season 1, Episode 7, Drift Mark. Listen, y'all, bear with me with this one, because when I tell y'all I've been having the craziest technical difficulty today, you know, my HBO Max, literally it took me two hours just to watch the episode, it was freezing every second, everything that could go wrong went wrong, but we are gonna move on from there, you know, my head is killing me, but we are gonna get into this daggone review, honey, all right, um... This actually started out, of course, with Miss Lena's funeral. You know, R.I.P. Lena, R.I.P. Girl, I wanted more time with you. You know, I felt a little cheated. But unfortunately, you know, we got to move the story along. Of course, she died and they are doing her funeral. You know, I also um, came to find out that they had deleted scenes that they ended up not using where we would have actually got to see this relationship with her as far as her saying that she has started riding Vega since she was 15. I wish they would have left those in, but I'm pretty sure, you know, that there is many more things that have been cut out. Of course, they have to make their creative decisions of what they want to keep in and what they want to leave out. You know, this was not one of my favorite episodes out of the seven that we got so far, right? May just be because I had such a hard time even watching the episode to begin with, but there were some things that I think were definitely key things to let us know the direction that we're going in. There was things that, you know, stuck out, and there were some things that we were able to find out a little bit more about. And so, of course, starting this off, we have, you know, Vayman Valerian talking, right, her uncle, and just saying that, of course, they're in Driftmark, the name of the episode, and they are basically, you know, joined at the seat of the sea today, to go ahead and bring, you know, Lena and let her be in the internal waters, right? And, um, you know, he's basically giving, you know, this big speech and everybody else is standing around. And if this was not the most awkward, you know, <laughs> crazy thing, um, this funeral, right? A lot of times we see death bring people together. And, yeah, it brought them together physically because we had all the different families there. But it definitely was divided, right? We had everybody in their little huddles, everybody in their little sections, everybody giving everybody the dag on side eyes from left to freaking right, okay? So we can see that they have definitely not made amends and don't look like they want to make an amends no time soon. You know, as um, Vayman is talking, he's basically saying that you know, they're going to commit Lady Leanna to the House of Valerian and, you know, um, in these eternal waters or whatever, right, with the domain of the Merlin King. And, you know, just have her guard, you know, her all the days to come. And everybody, like I said, is side-eyeing, looking at each other. You got Corleys and Miss Queen never ever together, you know, with the grandkids. You got Damon just standing by himself, you know, um, as we talk, as we have Damon talking. And he's looking directly at Damon. Damon is just literally looking with this smirk on his face. I don't know if he basically was feeling like maybe this was like a whole bunch of hypocrites that's around now, whereas... You know, we know that we are not all one big happy family and they wasn't coming around before. I really didn't know how to read that. You know, of course, Lenar is there with, you know, Rhaenyra and their tribe. We got King V there with Allison and their boys and, you know, everybody. Otto with his raggedy behind was back. Of course, he didn't waste no time coming back after what happened with, you know, um, the Strongs last week. Okay. And so everybody's pretty much looking at everybody like, you know, what they doing, what they going to say, what, you know, where's this going or whatever, you know, whatever, right? And so, you know, he's basically saying in this speech that though their mother is not going to return from this voyage, you know, their bond is, you know, born together through the Valerian blood. And, you know, um, it runs thick or whatever the case may be. And... It runs true. And so, as he's giving this speech, you know, you got King V looking over at Venera, and they say, you know, although I was maybe thin or whatever. And so, Damon just started laughing at that part, and they all looking at him. And I'm like, Damon, what is going on here? Hold it together, okay? And 
you know, they go ahead and they release her into the sea. Now, when she dropped down, it wasn't that, you know, deep as I thought that it would be, right? It was pretty shallow there. And I don't know, again, because my thing kept freezing every day for a minute, if that was just maybe like a shadow off of, you know, her um, tomb when they dropped it in. But it actually looked like it was another tomb down there. But then it wouldn't really surprise me if, if it was because I would assume that, you know, this is where they basically um, drop a lot of the tombs, right? So it had looked kind of like she fell on top of one or close to one i'm not too sure but if anybody else you know noticed that let me know put it in the comments and so you know of course after that we've seen the dragons flying and of course i always love those shots and see seeing all of them you know i always think that those is well done and we still pretty much have them you know just continuing to huddle around in their different sections and it's really interesting to see the dynamic of the kids, right? Of course, at this point, because they've been, you know, separated and arguing, the kids is pretty much separated and don't get along either, right? And look at each other like, you know, enemies. But it's funny to see the, um, you know, like the contrast between Renera's boys and Allison boys, right? Renera boys, I mean, are sweethearts. They have manners, you know. Um, when she's going up to him asking him if he's seen his father and that he should go be with the little cousins and show them some love, give them a kind word. You know, he says he should have equal sympathy because of Lord Lionel and Sir Harwin and she's looking around to see if anybody heard him and she's like, that would not be, you know, appropriate. appropriate. We are Valerians, the kin, you know, we're kin to the Valerians, not the Strongs. And she's like, look at me, do you understand? And he basically says, yeah, and he goes over there. And, um, you know, I'm sorry, I don't really know um, Damon's daughter's names like that. I'll get it eventually, but I think one name is Bella. But we can see that they're sad that he don't really know what to say. He goes and stands by them, and then one of them does reach out and hold his hand. Now, when we see Allison boys, on the other hand, they're literally dogging out their own sister, talking crap about her, saying, you know, mostly I think it was... Um, uh Aegon that was doing most of the talking but he's like oh she's weird because of course we're seeing her she's always with these bugs and she's basically saying with these bugs okay she'd rather be with these bugs than these daggone people and so you know they were saying how they don't have nothing in common and you know Eamon is kind of saying to him like she's our sister he's like yeah she's also a weirdo she's crazy he was like you marry her then and he tells him I will perform my duty okay and he basically was like you know if mother had only bestowed us or whatever, this actually could strengthen our family and stuff like that, right? And we could keep it in the Valerian blood. They We know they do that, right? And so he's saying she's going to be our king, queen one day. But, you know, Aegon is basically like, yo, she's an idiot. You know, look at her and who would want her and all this other stuff, right? So it's like he don't mind talking crap about his sister. He don't mind talking crap about his brother. He don't mind talking crap about anybody. We see that. He really does not care, and it's so funny to me that Allison spends so much of her energy, you know, always wanting to call Renera kids out and call her kids different names, but she does not acknowledge what she's literally turning her own kids into and the things that, you know, he's out here doing, getting drunk and, you know, probably sleeping with the handmaids, of course, getting off in the window and all of that. Like, she literally ignores all of that, you know, maybe also because he's a boy child, but... You know, of course, I already let y'all know that I think Allison is a freaking hypocrite. So I just think it's just her being a hypocrite, period. But she doesn't even acknowledge them in the way that she needs to, you know. And and in the meantime, um, he's going to say, you know, we do have one thing in common. We both like fancy, you know, creatures that we could go ahead and play with. And of course, in his you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what he's talking about is not no bugs like what she's playing with. He's basically talking about these handmaids that's around. You know, you got freaking old Clubfoot behind. <sighs> I'm so sick of his behind. You know, he's been staring at her since they got there, right? And, of course, Christian comes over to let her know that. And she's like, oh, no, you know, that's just a look of pride or whatever the case may be, Sir Christian. Like, don't worry about it. Lyris is basically the new Lord of Harrenthal. So that's what he's happy about when we all know that he looking at her for a completely different reason, you know. And I was like, okay, girl, whatever. So, you know, 
Corliss comes over and he's talking to, you know, Luke and he's telling him one day your brother's going to be king and, the, and you're going to take over from me, right? And you'll have, you know what I'm saying, basically the Lord of the Tides to rule the seas. And Luke is saying, I'm sorry, I don't want it, okay? He's basically like, you know, that's not for me. And Corliss tells him, is your birthright? And so that was interesting to me as well because even though he knows that, um, you know, this is not really biologically or not from his son, right, as a grandson. Him, as you know, just like King V, is treating them as if they are, right? He's not treating them any different. And I appreciate that because at the end of the day, these kids did not ask to be born. They did not ask to be in these positions. They could not help it, okay? And I appreciate that they do treat them as if, you know, they are one of theirs their own and you know luke is saying to him if i'm the lord of driftmark then that means everybody's dead so at the end of the day if you know he's thinking about everybody dying then that's not something that's going to make him happy and make him want it and so that just showed how innocent and pure that he still is you know um you know of course Renera and Renere's okay see each other and they really don't got much to say to each other she just come and try to get her drink it's different people that's telling her you know I'm sorry and she's saying thank you you know we also got these weird looks of back and forth between Renera and Damon where neither one of them going over to each other Damon is still off by himself you know King V is looking at him every so often you know um Queen never ever goes over and hugs her granddaughters she basically doesn't pay you know, Luke and Iman, so you can see the contrast between how, you know, Corley's is interacting with him, with them and how she's interacting with them. And then when Eamon comes over, him and, you know, Jace just basically look at each other. They don't know how to interact with each other, you know, and he kind of walks off. So, you know, it's the separation that's between them that their parents put them in. You know, um, of course, Otto tried to come up and say something to Damon and he just was walking off like boy if you don't get the hell up out of my face you know Laynard's just standing in the middle of the DMC you know and um Corliss gets upset at seeing that and tells him you know Laynard's friend like go get him out that damn water you know his brother had to step up and be like brother and have them get separated so everybody is seeing that this is awkward everybody is seeing that nobody is together you know after king v looking back and forth at damon for a while he actually ended up getting up and going over to him and telling him that he knows how you know this feels and that the gods can be cruel and of course damon got to make a joke because he was like yeah they've been especially cruel to you okay because he see how he looking half dead out here in these streets and he says, you know, yeah, you right about that. And so he basically was saying to him, like, you know, come home after all this devastation and stuff that you've been through, you know, you should be with us. And Damon is basically telling him, like, nah, I'm good. Pentos is my home, me and my girl's home, okay? We are going to stay right here. And we know that he was already saying that to Leanna when she was trying to get him to leave, right? She did want to be back home. She did want to see her mother and father. She did want to see her brother. She did miss them. And he was not on the same page as her. And so basically, he's pretty much still saying the same thing to King V. And, you know, he ends up walking away from him, right? And this is no real shock. We know that no matter what, you know, yeah, Damon gets on his nerves and all of that other kind of stuff, right? But he still will extend himself, especially when he knows that Damon is going through it. He still feels bad, right? And he still wants to try to make amends and wants family to be family. You know, he's like brother and he's telling him, you know, you need family. And Damon is saying he needs nothing. And so, you know, pretty much Damon didn't want to be bothered with none of them. He's trying to get as far away from them as he can so that nobody will not come up to him and be talking to him you know about anything else and so i did like the part when um you know king v is going to lay down he stops in front of allison and says you know i'm going to bed amina and then <laughs> the, the, the night's guard was like you know should i stay and watch you know um with the queen you know and he says nah like no and you know basically um, he tells Christian to, you know, take command or whatever, right? So I said, good for her ass, because I'm sorry, I don't like her, I'm tired of her. Now, in the meantime, Otto finds his grandson, 
you know, all laid out, drunk in the dark on the side of the deck going stairs, and he ends up kicking him and telling him to take his behind the bed. And Leonard's friend is not too far behind, basically taking, you know, him up to bed or whatever, right? And so, you know, Ranieri's and Corley's is having this conversation, and I found their conversation really interesting too, because Ranieri's is pretty much feeling the same way. First of all, she's mad. Yes, she does want somebody to blame. She's basically saying, you know, she wanted to come home. She wanted to be with us, and he denied her. And at the same time, Corley's is saying, you know, he did what he thought was best. So I was kind of surprised to see that it looked like he was taking Damon's side in this situation, right? But Corliss went back to still talking about somehow, you know, she was supposed to be the queen. She was supposed to have the crown, right? And he feels like, you know, they have to stay in this flight. And I guess Saba Renera, whatever, so that she could get this crown to make up for the fact of, you know, her losing her crown. Like, he doesn't want to lose this twice. And it was basically the same conversation that they had when King V came and visited them before. So, she's like saying to him again what she already pretty much made clear before. Listen, that's been years ago. I already gave up that. I don't give a dag on about that, you know. This is more about your dag on ego and stuff like that, right? And she was saying how Damon only does what's best for Damon, which she ain't lying with that part, right? But she basically was saying, like, you have two granddaughters that's now without their mother, and they are your blood, you know. Um, You over here worrying about Renera's kids, like, let's be real, okay? We could play games when we outside in front of everybody else, but in here we know that those is not our grandkids, and we ain't got to sit here and lie to each other. And I was shocked when he turned and was like, listen... It's not about blood. It's about name. At the end of the day, people remember names, not blood. I said, oh, okay, Corliss, that's what we're doing. So that's interesting because Corliss is kind of doing the same thing that King V is doing, right, for different reasons. But when it boils down to it, it's like they're being naive and oblivious and just want to avoid the conversation, avoid the situation, play along, pretend that this is what you know, it's supposed to be, and it kind of reminded me and was giving me a little bit of, you know, growing up when I was younger, and I had my <laughs> Muslim uncle, may he rest in peace, I remember one time he told me I wasn't as important because I was a girl child, okay, and if I married them, my name changed, but when my brother, he's basically carrying on the name, and so that's almost, you know, pretty much what Corley's was saying, right, not to mention, of course, that that grandson would then go on after Renera and be on the crown. So for him, it's all about the name. And, you know, he kind of pulled his hand away from her and had a little bit of an attitude going on. And I was like, really, call this? I'm like, okay, this is interesting, okay? So I wasn't really expecting him to have, um, you know, that reaction. And she was telling him, like, legacy may be, you know, what you all about, call this, but that's basically not what I'm all about, so we do see them, you know, not agreeing on this, and not wanting the same thing, right, and so, um, you know, she was saying she wanted to pass Driftmark, you know, to Bela, whatever, right, the real true bloodline, and that this would honor Layla's, um, memory, and he says to, you know, to this, like, to disinherit our daggone son, and she says, well, would you have me cast an even, you know, darker shadow or whatever, right, by, um, basically, um, you know, she's telling him we're alone here, husband, and you can speak plain, you know, she was like, come on, we gotta start making some changes, making, you know what I'm saying, setting different things up because now the situation has changed and we literally have, you know, one child left and it's basically like you've been trying to sacrifice our kids just to basically be able to have this legacy and live in this, you know what I'm saying, time that you want to have or whatever, whereas you're not looking at the real deal and how things are. And so they definitely wasn't agreeing when it was coming to this, right? And so... You know, they both was pretty much set in how they felt and set in their ways and what they believe. Now, moving on along, we see an Amen sneaking on down or whatever, right? Um, to try to go ahead and see about this daggone dragon because, of course, we was hearing the dragon making different noise throughout, you know what I'm saying? 
um, in the background, and we already know he wants a dragon, and, you know, he don't have one or whatever, right? And we also had Rhaenyra and Damon having this conversation where she's actually saying, you know, so much time has went, they haven't got to speak to each other, she's catching him up on her and, um, Lena and saying that, you know, they would try to find joy or whatever the case may be, you know, they may disagreement with each other and we actually found out that they did try to conceive you know several different times but it just didn't happen and she was able to find some type of comfort you know with sir Harwin, harwin and he was devoted to her and stuff like that right and she was basically saying that she trusted him and that maybe she should have actually told him you know not to go back and he possibly could have been still alive you know he shouldn't have returned to the riverlands and he was basically like you know um they was started talking about the curse and everything that happens then that is a ghost story and so he says you know why don't you believe that sir otto could have something to do with this and she says that she didn't think allison you know could commit murder i said girl maybe you need to check again of course we know that she's not the one that told loris um loris to go and do that right and um she said that that's not what she wanted but like damon said anybody could be capable of that right if they're pushed hard enough and then basically she has said to Damon like I believe you could do it and I mean we all believe he could do it shoot right but at least he keeps it real and he acknowledges that he's that way whereas Allison likes to throw dag on rocks and then hide her hair honey so you gotta move with her a whole different way you know but at the end of the day um you know She's telling him, I know little of your life, right? So that's all I could do is make assumptions because I have not been here to see it. And she was asking him, did he love um, Lena? And he says, we were happy together, you know? And he basically says, you know, he has the right to grieve. And she basically, because she was saying that's a great achievement within itself as if she didn't believe that he could love anybody right or maybe she even thought that he probably could have done something to Lena and then she does apologize and say I'm sorry and he basically was like don't be but he says I'm allowed to mourn you know losses and she was like yes you are now I don't know how it went from that I mean granted I have always known that these two wanted each other but I said damn like she just literally was dropped in the ocean a couple hours ago or haven't even been hours you know she she talking about something I want you and so they proceed to go ahead and um get it in I said okay girl I guess you know I didn't really need to see it wasn't asking for it I'm just like whatever so in the meantime Eamon of course is on this daggone hunt for this daggone dragon you know he coming over here and I just thought this was so disrespectful because again this lady just died okay Vega is actually mourning to her as well she's old she's freaking sleeping and he's so daggone rude he actually you know had the biggest balls in the world because as big as this daggone dragon is and as tiny as he is he over here coming and you know waking her up out her sleep or whatever the case may be touching her and the first time she just looked up at him and then put her head back down now the second time she almost opened up that mouth like she was ready to set his behind on fire like boy if you don't leave me the heck alone but then he basically was able to, <clears throat> I forgot the word, I think it was something with an L, but basically I guess this is the reverse, the reverse of Dakaris, you know, when you want them to set stuff on fire, you say Dakaris, and when you want them to stop, you know, you basically say the opposite for them to stop, and she did stop, and it was as if he was telling her, you know, who he was and stuff like that, and then he just started climbing on top of her. It wasn't even like he waited, you know, because he ain't patient, and he ain't going to wait, so I don't know why I'm shocked, but he just immediately was, like, climbing on top of her, on top of her, and she was even looking like if she was trying to shake him off at first, right? Like, get the heck up off me, but he still was just there. Now, I did like this scene and thought it was, um, a pretty scene and also funny when you know he was <laughs> flying on her and she literally had him swinging from side to side hanging off of it whatever else he yelling and screaming you know um she diving down and coming up and all of that kind of stuff but i basic i guess that's basically you know the way that he was able to make his claim and i guess she accepted it and now you know what i'm saying he is hers but I didn't like it. It turned me off from him even more. So now, you know, 
um, Damon's girls had looked out the window and saw this, and they had basically woke up Jace like, you know, somebody is still in Vegas. So when he get back to the house now, you know, they see that it's him, and they like, oh, it's you, and he like, yeah, it is. And he came in real nasty, you know, telling them, because she was like, well, that was my mother's dragon, and I was going to claim it. And basically, in not so many words, he told her, you snooze, you lose. You wasn't fast enough, right? You should have been did it if you wanted it. And he was like, your mother's dead. She can't do nothing with it being real nasty. And he's the one that started making threats to them. You know, I would kill you and feed you to my dragon and all this other stuff. You know, he want to come and be punching the girls and fighting with them and stuff like that and so jace was like nah we ain't having that you know he calling them out their name saying um at least my father is still in there alive and calling them bastards and telling them oh you don't know your father was um Larry, um was harm and strong and all of this stuff he was being the utmost disrespectful okay picking up rocks he was picking up weapons first he was coming after them first so they all started fighting him and beating him right and then you know, Jace came and he jumped into it and they was all fighting and he had that knife and he sure enough, you know, swiped him across that damn eye, right? And we know that his sister last week said, you know, yeah, he will gain a dragon, but he will basically lose a eye. So, you know, obviously she is a seer or a dreamer or whatever the case may be where she's able to pick up things. And she called it with that, right? And so now he is like one-eyed aiming or whatever, you know. They let them know that, you know, the skin will heal, but the eye is not. And King V is mad. He's saying, you know, what happened? I want to hear all the details. I want to know how this all took place and how this got to this. We have Allison, of course, just ready to, you know, say an eye for an eye, two for a tooth, and want to call them out more names and say all this different stuff about them. You know, he's asking why none of the guards was there. They said, well, we never had a prince go after a prince he said that's not a damn excuse okay i don't want to hear that and so you know at this point you have coolies and you know rainies coming in you have renera and damon coming in because all of them was out here you know wherever the heck they was out doing what they was doing and so they're coming in to see what's going on because they've been hearing everybody else yelling and they're like saying what happened and then king v is basically like you know i'm still waiting on the answer you know because Jace was basically like, you know, well, he was calling us bastards. He was saying we don't got no father. At least he still got his father and, you know, telling them everything that happened, right? And saying he attacked me first. And so, of course, Renera and Allison is arguing back and forth because she's like, yo, they was defending, you know, himself. You got um, Damon's daughter, I think her name is Raina, saying, you know, he stole mommy dragon and different stuff like that. Now, meantime, Damon just off on the side smiling, looking like he enjoying seeing all the drama while everybody else is bickering with each other. So, you know, of course, when he said they called us bastards or he called us bastards, she's like, you know, I'm tired of this. You know, they keep coming out saying all this different stuff and putting things out here about my daggone kids or whatever. And so King V was like, where did you hear this? You know, um, Renera was saying it was a regrettable accident and Allison like that's not no daggone accident he was trying to kill my son what are you talking about accident she was like no they was basically defending themselves okay they was forced to defend themselves and they always getting insulted and all this stuff so King V is like what insults and he basically starts saying you know where did you hear this from who is the one that's been saying this I laughed because Eamon with that one eye he had looked straight at Allison like mom is you right but he doesn't say that it's her he basically says it's Aegon and Aegon was kind of like me and then he goes up to Aegon and was like you know where are you hearing this from and Aegon just pretty much was like look everybody be saying this everybody knows this already it's not a secret you know it's all being talked about everywhere right and I thought that that was funny or whatever the case may be right and it's not like that's a lie it actually is but you know they were so busy um, just yelling and screaming and um, arguing amongst each other where you couldn't even hear what one was saying over the next one. So at this point, King V just screamed like, enough! Silence! You know, we're gonna all come together. We're gonna be a family. And that's the end of that. You know, we're gonna apologize to each other and the king demanded and that type of thing. And so 
Alice then started getting real cute, telling you, boy, she got the right one, honey, because if she would have been married to King Henry, he would have already chopped her behind up several different ways, all right? We wouldn't even be having none of these discussions. But she decides she going to talk about some, you know, if the king is not going to take charge, then the queen is going to take charge or whatever, right? And she literally tells Christian to go after them and take their dad, on, you know, take his eye out or whatever the case may be in front of everybody while everybody is standing there. And, you know, the king is basically saying, like, you will do no such thing. And she says to Christian, like, well, you are basically promised to me, okay? She was really trying to play it like she had more damn authority than he doing. It's like, girl, even if one of your damn sons become king, like, you still can't do nothing. It would be them that's in charge. So I was finding it funny that she really was trying to be real disrespectful and just out there with king, um varies like it was a nothing right and she says you know you told me you had a debt to pay right but even christian had to let her know like um i am your protector okay but i can't just be coming out here and trying to go and snatch out no damn kids eyes okay and so he was telling her to temper her judgment and stop or whatever the case may be he was like that's enough of course she still wasn't paying him no dag on mine she basically ends up you know, grabbing the knife and saying if the king wouldn't sing you justice, then she was going to. And basically trying to run lunch at the little boy. He there yelling and screaming and crying. And of course, we're never going to stop step up like a mama bear. You know, she intervenes and holds her daggone hand and was pushing her back. And then Christian tried to jump once he seen you know, her run over there, and then Damon had to hurry up and jump, okay, because he was just in the cut pretty much looking all before this, but as soon as Christian moved, he moved, and you know we're going to eventually get his part two, you know, with them two, because we know that Christian did kind of throw, you know, Damon off the horse back when they had the little, um, tournaments things right and was like oh remember me sir christian because i'm the one that threw you on your ass and back then i was all happy like yeah tell him christian because that's when i was liking him but now i don't like your raggedy ass either christian so you know i can't wait for him and Damon to have his day part too because he sure enough stepped up quick like where you think you going okay this is between the ladies right now like what you think you gonna do and so when she rushed to her whatever the case may be and was saying all this stuff about, oh, you know, what have I done but was suspected of me and the kingdom and the family law. And I've been upholding everything while you fall flout and do as you please and all this stuff. And they tell, still telling her to, you know, go. She says, where's your duty? Where's your, um, you know, sacrifice? And they still saying, release the blade. You know, even Otto was telling her to let it go. So she's like, oh, you feel entitled. And, you know, Renera basically, basically said, it's exhausting, isn't it? Okay, hiding beneath the clothes of your own righteousness i say yes 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 thank you because that's all this chick been doing okay she did not tell not one damn lie when she said that she was like but now everybody sees you as they are now mind you when she pulls back she actually ends up cutting renera the next thing you know she bleeding you know corliss is coming behind her holding her arm then allison want to look all shocked that she's bleeding and drop the damn knife like girl if you did with a knife lunging at people obviously somebody gonna get cut you know, Eamon ends up saying that um, it's a fair exchange. You know, he lost the eye, but he gained the dragon. I say, yeah, okay. So, of course, Otto brings his raggedy behind in the room to see Allison. And he, she's basically like, say your piece. And he was like, what exactly do you think my piece is? And she was like, oh, that I messed up, that I went too far, that I conducted myself in a manner unprevented of my station or of any daggone thing for that matter, you know. And he basically was like, yeah, that's all true. But, of course, at the same time, he's like, but I'm proud of you. You know, I'm happy. I didn't know you had it in you. This showed me another side of you. I had never saw this sign before. And so it lets me know that there may be a chance that you and I will actually prevail. I say, yeah, okay. You know, she over here talking about she disgraced herself. What can she do? And he says, you'll apologize. And he'll accept it. You know, what other choice will he have? So, basically, she just tells him to go play up to King v or whatever right and that you know aiming winning over vame vega is actually you know strong and he's right the price of paying his eye for his eye for vega is actually a thousand times paid right so she wasn't obviously looking at it in that way at first but then she seems to calm down and that makes sense to her you know we got um 
Renera getting her arm stitched, right? And they tell her it will heal, but you'll have a scar. Of course, now Lena done brung his drunk behind back. You know, he's apologizing. She tells the kids to step out for a minute. And he just says, you know, I wasn't there for my sister and I wasn't there for you. I've made a lot of mistakes over these last few years. You know, we promised each other that we would be there for each other and that we would just try to find our joy on the outside. You know, she basically laughed at that. But he says now that his friend is going to be leaving to go out here in the seashore and fight, you know, he's going to be there with her. He's going to step up. He's going to defend her. He's going to, you know, be 100% in with the kids. And at this point, she's just like laying on. He's like, no, I'm serious. I'm going to be down, da 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 But he don't know that, <laughs> you know, Miss Renera done made different plans, honey. She done went and got some of Damon, and now her mind is pretty much fixed where she wants her and Damon to get married. She goes to him and talks to him about their two houses bonding together and saying that that would be stronger and she would have a better chance of fighting. And Damon is like, well, you do know that the only way that that actually can happen is if, you know, Lena is dead. And she's like, I know, right? And of course, she's also saying that she's not this vicious, nasty queen or whatever the case may be. But he was saying, you know, in this game, you have to be, right? And, you know, King V and them is basically on their way back home. You know, um, Allison lets him know, like, I'm going to have some wine and stuff sent to you as soon as it's already ready for you, as soon as you get on the boat. So that way you could pretty much sleep most of the trip out. And, of course, we got, you know, Laris not wasting no time before he walking over to her to come out. Oh, crazy events that happened, right? And he was like, you know, if you want that eye gone, I basically could do it. And she's saying, you know, not right now, but she does see and appreciate all the hard work he's been putting in for her. I said, girl, whatever, you know. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Renera talks about fire and water, right? And that fire is a prison and sea is the escape. And she was like, you know, basically at the end of the day, they are, you know, fire. So now this is when she's getting the idea or already had it, but just telling Damon, like, we could basically come together, right? And, of course, he was saying, we can't do this if Lena is still living. So I said, oh, Lord, don't tell me they about to kill Lena, right? And so we see Damon with his cloak on, you know, whenever he put that daggone cloak on, it's like that Kermit the Frog a meme we see, right? We know once he got this hood on, he about to do some stuff, right? So he basically goes and he's paying the guy and telling him, you know, that um he needs some things done, right? And he was like, you know, um, did you know that there are places in the narrow sea where people could, you know, disappear. It doesn't matter what the man's name is and all of this stuff, right? And how much gold he possesses. Um, and so you know, he pretty much looking at Damon like, what are you asking for, my lord? Okay, what are you talking about? And he tells him that he wants a quick death. So I said, no, Patek, late not at all costs. Okay, and he says he don't want no, you know, witnesses. And so the next thing we know, you know, we see um, Damon come and choke up somebody from the behind or whatever. And we see Lena coming on this, you know, with his father's offices whatever and say you know what the hell are you doing in here right this is my father's um quarters why are you in here and he's telling him you know that he want to get it in and he been had it out for him and all this stuff so they both pull out their swords and the boy was like you know i'm gonna go and alert the guards because he was telling them both like please no stop or whatever right and so, you know, later on tells him, you forget yourself. And he was like, my Lord, please. So he's saying he going to get the guard. And we just see them tussling and fighting with these swords. And then the next thing we know, by the time Corleys and all of them run back, they pulling out this burned body. I said, no, I know this is not Lainard that is dead, okay? And we got freaking, you know, Venary screaming and crying or whatever have you. And at the same time, we transition. And I said, wait, these fools is already out here getting married? Like, is that what we doing literally five seconds after somebody damn die we go and we have a wedding apparently we do okay both of their kids is there damon kids is there her kids is there they having this secret you know wedding and then we see in this boat honey and come to find out mr Lenar is alive and well okay he done cut them damn dreads off okay and happy as can be with his little lover going off to live his best life and i said that's what we doing we faking deaths i mean i'm happy that you still living but we really faking deaths and just bouncing and leaving your mother tormented okay she already just lost her daughter now she gotta lose her son too 
okay, I guess we're going to go with it. But that was the episode, y'all. You know, put it in the comments. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like, you know. What are your predictions? What do you think we're going to be getting into next, honey? All right, put it all in the comments. Let's discuss, let's discuss, let's discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you are so inclined. Till next time.